What's up? This is B-Boy Hakim, otherwise known as Pedro, from Rock Solid Crew and Soul Seekers Crew, um, from South Africa, now living in Korea. And today we're going to be asking Dizzy some questions. Tell us in general, what do you do? I, in general, work for Cartel Creative as a producer for the R16 Global Tournament. And I am a retired b-boy. Can you tell us what's been on your mind for the past one year? Or what have you been thinking about? Uh, for the last year, I've just been thinking and working on trying to find a way to make breaking become like a, a more professional industry or, or, you know, that people can make a living and find ways that we can progress breaking and give b-boys all around the world an opportunity to, yeah, just make a living. And did you have any challenges over the past one year? There are a lot of challenges. I mean, especially with our system. A lot of, uh, you know, it's just trying to get people to open up their minds and, and express what I'm trying to accomplish. You know what I mean? How I'm trying to unite the community. So Dizzy, tell us all about R16 2012. The finals was really big. <laughs> yeah. Was it the biggest one so far? I think yes, it was, I mean, this is the first time that it was uh, every, pretty much every single crew and B-Boy, they won a national competition, then went to the continental or regional championship and then came to the world finals. So it was kind of cool, it was really cool. Cool. And what about the B-Boys? How did they react to the system? Actually, it was a lot better this year, right? Like the year before, it was not that great because people were like, oh, I think I got robbed. Everyone says that every, every time anyways. And instead of saying, hey, it's a, the judge's fault, they said, oh, it must be the system's fault because without the system, all of them would have magically won at the same time, right? <laughs> but uh, this year, actually, I, I did get some good feedback. Uh, some of them said that, yeah, that they were less, less upset than they would they normally would have been because they saw where they won and where they lost and that was that was i was really happy to hear that because that's exactly the whole point that's of, the whole point of, that's the whole point of it yeah. right okay now the big question that big everyone's question. been asking yes what did it. you think when b-boy isay mm -hmm. won the solos at r60 okay i'm gonna tell the honest truth the honest honest truth like your immediate thoughts my immediate thoughts Right after the battle, I thought that Ise won. Like right when, like it's because I was watching the scores. I was seeing yeah. what was going up, going, what was happening. Rockstrike was winning in the first two rounds and I was voting for Rockstrike because Rockstrike is actually one of my favorite B-boys. And I was like, yes. And the last round, you could, I was on the stage so I can feel the energy, right? He lost a lot of energy and I was like, oh, Ise has got to kill it this round if he's going to thing. And on the stage, he brought a lot of energy and he, and he did kill it his last round. And I, and I remember me and the administrator were going, oh no, I think he's, gonna, he's probably gonna take it. And then it went, bing, and rocks right lost. And we were like, no! So immediately after that, I was like, darn, people are, people are not gonna be happy about this. <laughs> That's what yeah. I was thinking. I was thinking like, people are gonna be like, oh no, he lost and you can't lose, you know? So, so there's nothing else, they, nothing you could do. I wish, I actually wish though that it would have been easier for me if Rocks right won. So that way I can be like, see everyone, yeah. it works. What did you think about the Rocks Ride and Issei battle after you went over the footage again? After I went over the footage again, I still was like, I didn't know who won, like, you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, I can see why Issei won, right? And I can see why, I, if I can see why Rocks Ride won. I think that Rocks Ride should have taken originality. He won foundation, which is true. He definitely lost dynamics, that was pretty clear. But they both executed, except, actually no, actually I think Issei took execution in the very end, actually, because he executed and Rocks right did it, like he, he got up without confidence. Yeah. And last, and definitely I think that in the end, um, Issei took the battle category because of just the final round, you know, like it all boils down to kind of like a knockout round. Yeah. Two or three judges, I think they, they think, they said that they felt Rocks right won, right? But that's based on their opinion, yeah, right? Their, the general feel their general the feel, their, their personal opinion on what they like and whatever, right? Uh, because there's some people, a lot of people who also said that they thought Issei won, right? So how do we know who's right or who's wrong? So do you think like all these debates that are arising from people talking, do you think that's helping b-boying grow? Or? 
The bad thing about it is that people are, are getting divided more, but the good thing is that it gives an opportunity for people to come together and say, okay, let's try to make a standard of what is good foundation, what is perfect foundation, what is average, right? And that's exactly what we're trying to do, right? Like the system itself without standards doesn't make sense actually, right? Like I, I learned that a long time ago, it doesn't make sense. But that's what we're doing is we're creating standards where the judges have to go by and say, okay, this is what good foundation is and they can tell you why. And I think that like, you know, like a lot of people who are debating online, these young guys, they're like, they're just young. Who are they to like, you know, make a, give an opinion. They give such a biased opinion. They need to give an opinion based on multiple opinions within that one opinion, because that's what an education is. An education is all sides of the story, right? Not just one side of the story, because that's called indoctrination. You know what I mean? So in essence, you're trying to create a perfect system. Is it possible to even have a perfect system? There's, there's, no, there's no such thing as a perfect system, obviously, right? But there's all, there are good systems, and these systems act as tools to make things better for the community. So right? we could say you're trying to create an effective system. An effective system that preserves the true essence of what b-boying and battles should be. That also just, yeah, that, that can take breaking to the same level that hip-hop, that the other elements of hip-hop have gotten to and it can take us back right there and not just that even unite all the old elements of hip-hop back together because b-boying we need the rapper we need the dj we need the music we need you know to look sharp and fresh and tag our place up and stuff like that like we need that whereas rapping they're just like they go their own way they just say screw you b-boys we don't need to make music for you we're just gonna make our own djs they can just play music wherever and they can whatever but b-boys we need hip-hop to come together you know we're the only ones that can save it so we need but the only way that can happen is if we as as a culture as a movement as as b-boying itself takes its place the rightful place and that's up here in the limelight you know what about at r16 2012 with the rocks right versus isei battle mm -hmm. now all the judges they voted using the system based on the system isei won the battle mm -hmm. but for a lot of the judges their general feel was still that rocks right one. Mm -hmm. Even despite that, would you still say it's, it's a reliable system? Uh, it's not, the system doesn't magically choose the correct winner. It doesn't do that, right? It's the judges that do that. And we have first to assess if the judge actually chose the right scores. Like, you know, like if the, did he really, did the judge really feel that they, that Ise won foundation or, or sorry, rocks won foundation? If so, by how much? And originality, if you really break it down, did the originality judge do a good job? So, right? so, you, so you're pretty much saying it's more about the reliability of the judge? Yes, of course. Rather than the system. I mean, yes, the, the system is a tool for transparency to preserve all the different aspects of breaking into one, to account for everything. But most importantly, it's the judge behind it. The judge's knowledge of each of them, of each category that they're judging on. They need to get that right. If they don't get that right, the system won't work. But uh, don't you think that the fact that it's a system is still somehow restricting what b-boying is? If it, the fact that it's a system? Yeah. Well... Because, I mean, in essence, b-boys will have to conform to the system. Well, I don't think there's any... In the system itself, you don't have to actually conform to it because it's broad, right? If, if it, There's not one thing in the system that says you have to do a specific move or you have to do a specific style in order to win. If it says that, then you have to conform, but it doesn't. It instead says there are five things that if you can win the majority of them, right, and you get to choose how you want to win them, then you're the then you then you you should win. And these five things are things that we need to preserve in breaking, like dancing to the music foundation. We need to preserve originality, right, in breaking. We need to preserve the difficulty, the dynamics, the blops and tricks, because without that, breaking is boring. We need to preserve execution, like, you know, because people can't be flopping and making mistakes all over the place. And we need to preserve the battle part of breaking, like the original aspect of what a cipher or an original battle used to be, which is a response. What do you have to say to people who would say power movers aren't even b-boys or that's not even real hip hop or they're fake? Oh, how, how would you respond to that? Well, I understand it because I used to say it too, but then I come to a realization that I only said it because I can't do it, right? That's, that's the truth, right? Like, I mean, yo, B-Boys, yo, like, how can you say that dynamic rockers and some of the OGs who all power moved back in the day, 
How can you say that they're not they're not b-boys? You know what I mean? Like Storm, he did power and stuff like that. He's not a b like is he not a b-boy? Like Maurizio had crazy power. Is he not a b-boy? Right? Like it's you know if if someone who does it who can power says does it and says yo this is not I'm not breaking I'm doing something else like gymnastics then I'll be like okay fine he, this person this authority is taking it somewhere else. But I just think that like yo we're all part of the same thing. I can't see why anyone wouldn't want that like what why would you want to divide the community and like break it up you know what about um people with really creative styles and you have people out there saying that's not b-boy or that doesn't uh stick to the true values of breaking well we first we got this we got to think of what b-boying is like what does b-boying mean right like b-boying means is like, well obviously that term came later because back in the day they never said the word b-boying but they said b-boy and what a b-boy was was a bad boy right a bad boy who was like yo i don't give a crap i don't give a, I don't give a fuck you know i don't care what you say i'm gonna smoke you so if you're doing that and you're living this lifestyle and you're still studying you're still learning and you're not conforming and you're being true to who you are Yo, you're like, you're, you're, you're b-boy, you're living your life. You're living the, the b-boy life. If you're broke and you got no money and you have no goals in the future other than just to break because that's all you ever know, then yo, you're b-boying, you know what I mean? Like, you know, if you don't have a backup plan, <laughs> you're b-boy. I think it's- So that's real b-boying. <laughs> I mean, I get this current thing, yeah. But no, I think it's, I think, it, I don't th I think it's, I think it's sad. I think it's sad that People want to split it up like that. So what are these guys who are doing power and they're battling? They're still dancing to the music, but maybe not as good as like the fundamental b-boys or the classic classic b-boy styles. But so where should they go now? Should they just should it completely split into two different things where now this is called power moving? You know, like they're not allowed to like see each other and like, oh, you're you're we're, you're, you're you're something else. Like we're totally different things now. I'm splitting into my own. No, man. Like, yo, it's about peace peace between all styles, unity, right? You, love, love means understanding, a connection and acknowledgement, respect, and having fun. That's hip hop. So you're trying to consider all the perspectives. What about people who say, how can a system like capture the raw energy of breaking? Where would that fit into the system? Well, first we have to say, what is the raw energy of breaking, right? Like, what is that? Right? Like, you have to define what that is first. That's something you'd have to feel for yourself. Yeah, you have to feel it for yourself. Like, the raw energy for breaking for me when I started was the, was the fact that you're going out trying to smoke somebody. Like, and you know, and you're just doing whatever you can to show you can, you're can you better than them. But nowadays, it's not like that. I think the raw energy is gone, right? Because of the fact there is no system. People aren't battling based on okay you know what like he did this i'm gonna smoke that I, oh he did this i can do this better than him people are people's minds have changed they're like oh i want to i i'm a real b-boy i want whoever fits the the mold of the b-boy better yeah they, they should win you know what i mean like it's like there's like a stigma or, or like a, a mental thing of this is what a b-boy should look like and whoever dances like that is the winner <laughs> you know what i mean but that's not what b-boying is about Right? That's not what breaking's about. That's never been what it's about. The raw energy was about, oh, you do power? I do better power. You have a good style? I do better style. Oh, you're saying I can't dance? I'll dance better than you. You're saying you got better footwork? Okay, I'll do better footwork than you. Like, that was the raw essence of that conversation, that debate, which right now without a system is lost. So with the system, I'm trying to put it back in. With your judging system or with the, our judging system, where do you consider flavor? Flavor. First of all, we gotta talk about what is flavor, okay? Like, what is it the flavor of? The flavor of sexiness? Like, what if I wanna, f I wanna put sexy flavor or gay flavor? Can I say, hey, I got mad flavor. It's sexy gay flavor. You know what I mean? Like, what if my flavor, I say, okay, flavor is my stiff, scared flavor. Can I put scared flavor or shy flavor? Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, there's a certain type of flavor that what equals b-boying that we're talking about. And they don't even know what that is, but what it is, is swagger, is confidence, right? So flavor of confidence is in foundation. So you're pretty much saying flavor is swagger. Flavor is, the flavor that you sprinkle on breaking is your confidence, your swagger, your, you know? Like when you do a move and you do it like all boring or sad, you have no flavor. But when you do it like, right? And you put that feeling, that confidence swag into it, that's flavor. 
You know what I mean? And that's a very vital, important part. Half of foundation. It's mandatory in battle. It's mandatory in execution. And if you don't put flavor in originality, then it just looks really weird. Like no one will get it if you don't put flavor into your original moves. I mean, like I, did, I guess the, diff the only difference that confidence can be like where you're just you're just confident, but you're not putting mu you're not putting extra personality into it. Just showing confidence. Where flavor is when you're putting a little bit more feeling and more like character into the co the confidence that you're displaying. Okay, a lot of b-boys have been asking and wondering where do the foundation aspects come from in the system or how did you define them and put them together? Well, in 1999, people said that you, my enemies who are battling against said, I'm not a b-boy and I said, I don't care, right? I said, I smoke you anyways, right? And in 2001, I got invited to Rock City and they said, Crazy Legs said, the reason why I invited you guys when they brought all 16 of us into the room is because you guys are real b-boys. And I was like, I'm a real b-boy. Okay, I thought I wasn't. So I started studying what it means to be a b-boy. And at the same time, I knew that foundation was part of my judging, was part of the judging system, but I needed to, to go deeper and figure out what out it is. Exactly. I want exactly what it is. Yeah. So I talked- You kind of feel like everyone was saying foundation, but no one knew exactly. Exactly, they said, people, people had their, thoughts of what foundation is, right? And so I had to say, okay, what is foundation? Because some people say foundation is anything. You have your foundation of your of your power moves. You have foundation this, foundation that. But in the end, like some people said, okay, foundation is basics or fundamentals. But in the end, what they're, what I think people were, what I realized that OGs were trying to say is what is the foundation of b-boying itself, of breaking, of, of, the, of, of the, of what we're doing, which is the attitude and the dance, the dancing aspect. That if we take away the dancing aspect, it's dead. And if we take away the, the flavor, the confidence, the attitude, that swagger, we're, we're losing. And it's true because when you used to see battles back in the day and they had no swagger, it was like such, such a boring battle. You're like, ugh, right? But when they, when they both put that swagger in it, that's what makes a good battle. Right? Because no one wants to go watch a boxing match where they, where they don't want to be there. They're where they're like, oh, no, it's, oh. Right? So you're saying a lot of the OGs uh, agreed on this. Well, no, what happened is I started talking to every single OG, one by one. And OGs, if you ever meet them, you'll see that they talk for hours. And what I found is there's certain things that they, they, they say in common, and there's certain things they disagree on. And what I did is I made, I took all their perspectives together as a collection and using like some thought and, and using some like my research and experience and then going back and asking them questions to try to formulate this, that's how I, it was put together. The, the one thing they all agree on is that there's confidence. That if you're not going in there with no confidence, the half your foundation is gone, right? They, and they all, can agree, they all agree upon this. The second thing they agree upon is that it's about dancing. Like, you know, you, I mean, you gotta dance. That's a, that the foundation of breaking is it's a dance, right? But how you dance and how you approach the music is the only thing that is, is different from each other, right? Some of them say it's all about sporadic, funky energy and the Bronx way of doing it. Some of them say, no, 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 it's about that flow, that Latin finesse, that everything is smooth. And some of them say, no, 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 it's all about musicality and how you play with the song. And, you know, so this is how it was formulated to cover all aspects, all different mentalities.